I am a Bene Israel Jew from India. My family gradually dispersed, mostly to Israel and America, but my parents remained in India. I am now an American living and working in New Jersey, but I still recall the ornate synagogues of my childhood, the oil lamps, the velvet and silver covered Torahs, a chair left vacant for the prophet Elijah in our Bombay synagogues. Having grown up in a predominantly Hindu Muslim society, being raised Jewish in India and now living in America, I always had to reflect on and consider the cultural borderland in which I seem to find myself. I am now a painter and I use the imagery of my past with the role I played in America today making a mosaic inspired both by Persian, Indian miniature paintings and Sephardic icons. During a teaching residency in a high school several years back, I was asked by one of the students, are there real houses in India or is it the land of Indiana Jones? <laughs> Did you learn to speak English here in the US? How come there are Jews in India? How is it possible? Like there was some kind of invisible borderland that said, no Jews beyond this point. <laughs> and then they also asked me whether I rode on camels in India. This was something that I had never done. The disconnect was about the fact that camels were something that was exotic and came from the land of the other, and so I must have ridden on camels. Despite my complex identity, they were relating to me as a stereotype without depth. My childhood was something that I found very difficult to explain. No matter how much I tried to prove it, they were very, everybody was very perplexed and puzzled. An Indian Jewish girl going to a Catholic middle school in a Zoroastrian high school, what role did the, did the nuns play in my life? Who are the Parsis? Where did they come from? And then the larger Hindu and Muslim, the Muslims that surrounded me, this made the camel ride totally fathomable. <laughs> and this was just the tip of the iceberg. Having delved, delved deeper into the situation, synagogues in the middle of the city of Mumbai, Jewish women wearing saris, Jewish brides having henna on their hands, Hebrew transliterated into Marathi. There was an endless list of unexplainable things. And in my attempt, to explain these unexplainable things, my skin turned blue, and I became the color of the sky and the ocean, belonging everywhere and nowhere at the same time. My blue skin, therefore, became a symbol for me of being a Jewish woman of color. The camel-inspired story about my Indian, Jewish, and now American identity became even richer in context about issues of identity and consequently, my Jewish identity. In a land of many, many Hindu gods and goddesses and beautiful Islamic moons, there lived and still lives a small community of Indian Jews. They have different melodies in their prayers and they make kosher coconut curries. <laughs> my mother was one of them and she lit the Shabbat lamp every Friday with great fervor and belief. Through this flame, she taught me to absorb my Jewish identity through the stories that she told me. She planted the seed in me to stand apart and yet be integrated into the vastness of India. Midrash was in me and I didn't even know it. So you would ask, what is Midrash? This study connects you to life and to stories both past and present. Myths, though ancient, can be connected to the contemporary, thus making them timeless and recyclable. Midrash is to find yourself in the Torah and to find your community. It helped me find my Ben Israel Jewish community. It helped me find my New Jersey community. It helped me find my transcultural community in this vast world. Myth is the fabric of life, what we choose, what we wear. It all is decided on our own myth-influenced selections. Our community influences our myth and vice versa. I realize that I like telling stories, 
But my art teachers had told me that my canvases should be large, abstract, and should not tell stories for me to be a successful artist. But in fact, my real love lay in making small, delicate, feminine paintings that spun stories. These realizations became a jumping board for me to be able to weave new mythologies in my life and my art. So how did Midrash do all this for me? By finding the old stories of my grandmother and my family from another time and another place, I could find similarities and differences that helped me understand how I fit or I didn't fit into a community. This is recycled mythology, both personal, political, and global, thus making me connect, to the, connect the dots in a much more broader sense. And thus my blue skin became an actor on the stage of identity. By finding myself in Midrash and recycling those stories, I am joining a long chain of Jews who with humility study the texts and recycle these texts to amplify the voices of these texts so it speaks to us here and now. Scholars do it through words, artists do it through images. Explanations of myth have helped me confront many topics about identity. For example, this painting which I did called Vashti. Here's an image of the story of Queen Esther. Vashti refuses to come to King Ahasuerus's palace and is banished and we never hear from her again. Here her story is given room to grow. In my painting, Vashti comes back and looks into today's newspaper slash window of her new home. The ancient queen of Persia now returns, filled with strife and the effects of war and violence. She looks in with pathos and is filled with questions. This is how I imagine the modern Vashti. And when I think about my own family experiences with war, this is how her story weaves with mine and comes back to life. In the next painting of mine, which is titled Rebecca, she's waiting by the well for Abraham's servant to come and find her and take her to become the wife of Isaac. The act of standing by the well waiting by the earthen pot was fodder for my painting. Just painting Rebecca by the, by the well would be boring and redundant. Her anticipation of her new life in her new American home can be compared to her life with Abraham and Isaac giving me inspiration for a new character as a new immigrant in a new land, America. Her stripes of American freedom is in contrast with the stripes of the bondage of her being also a Holocaust survivor. The simple act of waiting by the well has been transformed into waiting for peace and redemption in this world, here and now. Rebecca has a new life as an immigrant with new dreams, but she also confronts the socio-political issues of her world today, just as she did then. Her blue skin thus becoming a symbol, again, of being the other. She and me are integrated. Her story is mine and mine is hers. I can own her story just as she owns mine. Inspired by ancient synagogue mosaic floors like the Duro Europa and Bet Alpha, from 256 BC led me to study and make a porcelain tiled floor for a synagogue in St. Louis. It took me a year to learn about making the images for the floor and I studied with a rabbi there, which has now become a teaching tool for that community. This is an example of how Midrash is recycled and renewed and made accessible to a contemporary community today. Midrash can make us realize the similarities between us humans, that your story can be mine and vice versa. This common thread can be woven in complex ways, yet it can be unraveled to become the fabric of life. Through Midrash, discovery never ceases of ourselves, of our communities, and of our God. Parts of, ourself re of ourselves reinvent themselves and this recycling is one way of finding the path, the paradise, and the fulfillment of belonging. We may come from many different 
communities, countries, and continents, but we come from the same planet, and that planet is blue. Vaish 